number one question I get, what camera should I buy? And so I am here today to do a side-by-side -side comparison of four different cameras so you can see the differences. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon. Welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography and the goal here is to improve your food photography skills so you can feel confident behind the camera. And clearly I own more cameras than any person should, but uh, I like to be able to support my students in my online courses by understanding the different cameras that they're using. And so just understanding how Canon works, how Nikon works, how Sony works really helps me to be a better teacher. So as far as the lineup today, we are covering the gamut just in terms of price range. So we're going all the way from $4,000 camera setup all the way down to a $200 used camera setup. So first in the lineup, we've got the Canon 5D Mark IV and the 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens, which this is my go-to. Like I shoot probably 90% of the work that I do with this camera lens combination. It's a full frame camera with 30 megapixels. And as far as the price point though, all in for both this body and this lens, this combination right here is around $4,000. So definitely a financial commitment. Then next up in the lineup is the Nikon D750 with the 24 to 120 f4 lens. So this is again, another full frame camera ranking in at 24 megapixels. And in terms of the cost of this camera, I actually bought Bought this one used. You know I'm a big fan of buying used cameras from B&H and I paid roughly $1,600 for it. And then next up, I've got the Sony a6000, but I'm kind of switching things up on the lens here. I'm not using the kit. I'm actually using a 50 millimeter f 2.8 Zeiss lens. And any of you familiar with Zeiss lenses, that is some really nice glass. That lens runs you about a thousand dollars. And I did buy though this body used back in 2015 for like $600. So this combination all in is $1,600. Although you could definitely find a used a6000 for much less than that now. And then last but not least, I've got the Canon Rebel T2i, which is also known as the 550D. And I've got the kit lens on that, which is the 18 to 55 millimeter F 4.5 lens. And this is also a crop sensor camera, 18 megapixels and all in for the body and the lens. I actually only paid $200 because it's a used camera. I bought it from B&H. They've got a great used camera department, actually three of the four <laughs> cameras that you see in this video video or were all purchased from the used camera department at B&H. So now you can see the range of all the cameras we're working with all the way from our $200 entry level camera all the way up to that $4,000 pro camera that I use here in the studio every single day. And so what we're going to do is we're going to shoot these tomatoes, which how beautiful are those? Uh, just to walk you through the setup of how I'm lighting everything and how we're going to shoot this is I'm going for the overhead view and I've of course got it on that Ikea table, which I've made a video about. If you've missed that, you can check it out. Uh, but I've surrounded these tomatoes by black cards because I really want to create that vignette effect. And certainly you could do that in post, but I really like to do things in camera just so that you know that that's exactly how the light would behave, right? So that it doesn't look too fake or false, uh, that it looks pretty true to life. So I've surrounded it by those black cards and then I'm shooting all of this with a single speed light. I want to make sure to have consistency throughout the images in terms of the lighting. So shooting with flash enables me to do that. So I'm using the Godox TT685 speed light. Although you've seen my video about why I would say go with the V860 instead. Uh, but I've just got that single speed light mounted on a light stand and then I'm shooting through a 40 inch white umbrella. And then you can also see that I'm mounting the camera overhead because again, I wanted to really get that similar position between all the photos. If you've got questions about my overhead rig and how I use my C-stand that way, again, I've got a video all about that. And then one more thing that I did for the sake of consistency was maintaining the same camera settings between all of the cameras. So in terms of our exposure settings, I've got ISO 100, 1 200th of a second for a shutter speed, F 5.6. I've set them all up in daylight balance. And then I have selected that they output the images into JPEG so that I have a good like straight out of camera comparison because I really wanted to look at them side by side without manipulating them or doing any changes in post. 
And then I also selected the standard picture style so that when it renders that JPEG for us, that we have a good baseline of comparison between all the images. Now, like I mentioned, I tried my darndest to absolutely match like each individual camera from the position to get it to look as similar in terms of framing and approach and angle and everything. But there are gonna be some slight variations from image to image since we are working with different lenses and different focal lengths. So now let's go through the images of these tomatoes and see if we can pick out which is which and which one you like the best. Now, just one little footnote, cause I know I'm gonna hear about this, is that yes, there are for sure plenty of other camera brands outside of Canon, Nikon, and Sony, right? I mean, there are so many options out there and it would be unreasonable for me to buy more cameras at this point because I already own way too many. Uh, but when I survey students and when I interact with people online, most commonly folks are having Canon, Nikon, or Sony. And so that enables me to be the most help. Uh, and so yes, there are limitations of this very scientific study that I'm doing right now by not having a Fuji camera or, you know, the other makes and models that you want to see but hopefully again stick with me so that you can see just the comparisons of the cameras that I do have all right so here's shot a and shot B shot C and shot D all right wildly different amazingly similar <laughs> let's go through them one more time a B C, D, and here I'll put all of them up all here at once together so you can see. So here's what I find interesting about this. And of course I pulled Ryan and sent these images to some other folks and said, hey, can you pick out which is the pro camera, which is the entry level camera, like thoughts, opinions, which one do you like more? And what was fascinating is that it was always a variety of like which one was people's favorite. Now, of course, there are gonna be the people out there, the pixel peepers out there who get like super detailed into things and can go, oh, that one's the 5D Mark IV and oh, that's the $200 Rebel and can make those distinctions. But let's be honest, once we've processed these and compressed them and put them up on Instagram, like, is anybody really gonna notice? Like $200 versus $4,000? It's interesting, it's compelling, right? But now where I do definitely see some differences in these images is in how they've handled and rendered the color, right? That we've got some slight variations there that you look at the Canon, for example, both Canon examples, the colors kind of take on this very similar, like bold, a little bit more intensely saturated color situation. Whereas looking at the Sony and then the Nikon, things are perhaps not necessarily muted, but a bit more true to life. It's something to look at and is interesting and I think really helps to inform then decisions that we're making when we get into post-processing. So knowing that, for example, most of the tutorials on this channel are done with Canon cameras, and if you watch a Lightroom tutorial from me, that means that we're working already with a bit bolder, more saturated colors, and so that's why I sometimes throttle back on the saturation. Something to keep in mind. Now maybe you're thinking, Thinking, well, Joni, obviously you own all these cameras, but you're always going back and using the Canon 5D Mark IV. So that must be the best camera out of all of these. And what I would say is no. I mean, hopefully you're seeing that all these images are very similar, right? Like all these cameras, I'd be super proud to share any one of these images, that they're not necessarily better or worse than one another. What I would say is a pro level camera is gonna enable you to do certain things. It's got certain features and functions that just make life a little bit easier, especially when you're shooting nearly every single day like I do. And I would also say that I've just spent the most amount of time with the 5D Mark IV at this point, that you could literally blindfold me and put me on the 5D Mark IV and I would know how to change the settings, manipulate things, change exposure. Like I just don't even have to think. It's like driving a car. That does sound like a fun challenge at some point, like the blindfold photographer challenge. Has anybody done that before? Two, I've just invested the most into my Canon system. That's what all of my extra accessories and gear and lenses and everything, it's all in the Canon world. So that's why I select that camera on a regular basis. But what I want you to know is that any one of these cameras will do an awesome job and any Fuji camera and any other Sony camera or other Nikon cameras, 
they all do great work. So then the question is, well, what makes the difference? What has the biggest impact in terms of creating great images that if it's not the camera body and it's not even necessarily the lens, I mean, yeah, that Zeiss lens on that Sony did a fantastic job and that sharpness is delish. But in terms of the overall image that we have very similar results with different camera bodies and different lenses at different levels. Well, the secret is, and any experienced photographer will tell you this, that the single most profound impact to your images is in understanding your camera, understanding your camera settings, being in total control over the functions of that camera, and then also understanding and being able to manipulate and change your light. That the combination of those two things will have the most dramatic impact on your images, much more so than buying a new camera, much more, more so than buying any new lenses, that it's being in control. And I will say that it took me the better part of five years to really learn how to control my camera and understand how to control and understand my lighting. And so for that reason, what I have done to hopefully make your life easier, if you were just starting out on this photography adventure and you're at that place where you're like, I'm so excited to take pictures, but I'm so disappointed by what's coming out of the camera, is I've created an online course called Beginner Boot Camp. The idea that I've distilled down what took me five years to learn, distilled it down into something you can learn in the course of just several days. It has definitely been a labor of love because I wanted to take all of what I thought are the most important lessons, most important things that you need to know in order to be in control of your camera, to be in control of your lighting, in order to get those images and that quality that you're like, oh, Joni was right, my camera is awesome. So if you wanna fast track your food photography education and get in the pressure cooker with me and really accelerate those skills, I've got all the details to beginner bootcamp link down below. But so for those of you who've asked the question, what is the best camera for food photography? What camera should I buy? Hopefully from this video, you can see that you really can't make a bad decision. There's not a bad camera. They're all great, right? Any modern DSLR or mirrorless camera, I'm going to 100% support as long as it's within your budget. That to me, that's what's most important to pay attention to because I don't wanna see anybody overspending on a camera that's not gonna fulfill what they need, especially if you're just getting started and you're not sure that you're gonna, you know, turn this into something. I mean, for sure, you might totally fall in love and this is your life's calling, uh, but I don't wanna see you spend thousands of dollars when you can do great work with just a couple hundred. So ultimately my advice is stick to your budget, learn the camera that you have inside and out, and you will be amazed at the images you can create.